Hi, Jason. My name is Stacey Pals, as you know, and this is This Crazy Life. It is This Crazy Life. And as you, you know, I'm Jason. I do know you're Jason. Yeah. Do you remember the first time I interviewed you? Yes. On my Exhausted Parent radio show? Yeah. You brought all four of your kids in? Yes. That was really funny. It was funny. I got to find that show. I might have a copy of it. I mean, you know, you, I think that was really funny. That might help. With this? <laughs> no, with, with things going on in your life. Oh, <laughs> listening back to that show? Speaking of this crazy life, um, we have an amazing guest today. I want to ask you, her name is Shara Dubrovner, by the way, but have you ever been on stage? Have you ever done yes, a play? Yes, I, I loved in college doing theater. Oh, you did? I did, mm -hmm. I did theater in college, too. Where'd you yeah. go to college? I, Palomar Community College is when I did theater there. Palomar. Is that in San Diego? It is down in the San Diego okay. area. Okay. I went to Humboldt State. I absolutely loved theater. Yeah. Did you, favorite. were you on stage or did you do mm -hmm. the lights? You know, that's where I learned about lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Yeah. And I still use that today when I have to tie things. Is that right, Shara? <laughs> I... Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, doing the yeah. lights up there. Um, it Shara did... life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. And I, but I didn't like being on the ladders, hanging up from the things up there. Yeah, that scared scary. the bejeebers out of me. And I also didn't really like being on stage. And I know you you directed me in something, or was it, or no, you I, saw me in something? We was were it, in a show. Together. Oh, we were in a show together. See, <laughs> I can't even remember. Forget. Wow! Uh, come back this to the crazy five and dime. Life. Come back to the five <laughs> and dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, and I right. broke my knee two weeks before opening. Was it two weeks before, or was it a week before? I, Maybe it was, a week. It, I, I just remember you had this uh, uh, brace while you were performing, and I just was thinking, God, I hope she doesn't fall off the stairs. I hope she doesn't fall <laughs> off the, the stage. You know, it's just scary when somebody has an injury like that. Yeah, and that was the last time I was on stage, Why? and um, because it scares me. How <laughs> just, long ago was that? I can always see the audience members. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm doing my lines, but then thinking, oh, there's my husband. Oh, there's my mother. You know, when I'm on stage, I'm not a I'm not a good actress. So you can't. That's you can't not true. I'm not. Tune them out. She just thinks, I've said this to you before, and you just think I need a better director. No, you were good in that. Really? I, I thought uh, that was actually a good show. I think, you know, the thing is the material isn't so user-friendly. Mm -hmm. And so I think that not everybody wanted to come see it. Mm -hmm. But I think that it was a really good, solid show. And I think everybody was really good in it. Yeah, How long ago was this show? Like oh. 14 years ago. Oh, wow. Wait, yeah, because I was just getting together. I wasn't even together with Danny. We hadn't even slept together yet. No. <gasps> no, you were, you were single. We were, I was single. single I, he's like an single. onion. I was peeling away his layers. <laughs> but Shira Dubrovner. How many layers are left? He, he, he still has so many layers. He's like a Maui onion. Oh. You know, you just can never really get to the middle of it. Okay. You know, and that's good. We've been married 12 years now, and I don't want to get to the middle. I'm fine yeah. with that. <laughs> it's a good wedding. It was a really good Thank wedding. That. It was a good wedding. I'd like to do that wedding again, by the way. Yeah. We'll talk about that on another show. Um, Cher Dubrovner, thank you for being at This Crazy Life. And we know that everything is crazy, especially theater and what goes around at theater. And you have been such a staple and a godsend, if I might say, for the theater world up here. When you came up here, when did you first come up here? In 2007. 2007. But that was my second time being in Mammoth. I was here from 96 to 2000. And back then, they only had the um, High Sierra Musical Theater Company that was doing one show a year. And when I left, I... I but right before I left, I wanted to do, expand the season of having performing arts in Mammoth. But then I left in 2000. My mom had Alzheimer's, and I had to go home and take care of her. Mm -hmm. And I was, ended up being there for 17 years. And when she finally passed away, I thought, what am I going to do with my life now? I need to have a purpose. And I thought, I literally woke up out of bed one day, and I said, move back to Mammoth and start a theater company. Wow. Ooh, Ooh chills. That means... That means you were getting like from your angels or your guides or the ones that like put that in your head, yeah, by the you way. never know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I moved to Ma back to Mammoth and a lot of people remembered me, which was really nice and welcoming. And um, I just kind of got the ball rolling. And here we are 15 years later. And so you are head of, is it Eastern Sierra Arts Alliance? Yeah, so I created the Eastern Sierra Arts Alliance uh, right when COVID happened. I parted with Mammoth Lakes Foundation and needed a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. to be able to have donors to give their money to and uh, have a tax deduction. And so I created the Eastern Sierra Arts Alliance. And what our mission is, is to create performing arts in the Eastern Sierra, but also be a support to other arts organizations. So I've been partnering with the Playhouse 395. I've been partnering with Sierra Classic Theater. And hopefully with all my experience, I can help them and give them more expertise to elevate where they are in the community. And you were doing just that. What is going on over there? Yeah, the, I Somebody's guess the speakers phone? were on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. Turning it off. Kind there. of live-ish television. Thank God, going. yeah. <laughs> so um, are you going to go do a play at all? Mm. Have you thought about ever going Acting on stage again? again? Yeah. 
I, I've just been very busy, so no, well, I haven't they even thought have about auditions. it. Auditions, it, they do. Yeah. What are they? What are their auditions um, we coming? Have auditions up? for Plaza Suite, um, which is a Neil Simon comedy, and the David Lindsay Abair comedy, dramedy, really. Um, good people, and the, both will be. One will be in February as uh, Plaza Suite, and then Good People will be probably in April. And we're holding auditions for both those shows at the same time. And we're looking for gentlemen just about <laughs> your age. So I just don't know Ooh. how I fit that in with all the things that we're doing at last. Parrot yeah, TV. I know. There's a, there's a, there's a, <laughs> around everyone's schedule. I mean, she does. this is the problem living in a small town and dealing with people who have three jobs. You know, you have to yeah. work around everyone's schedule. So I'm very flexible, and I'm really good at coordinating um, rehearsal schedules. Hmm. So I might have to hold you to this. You know? <laughs> Do I, I have think... your phone number? <laughs> we'll give you his number at the oh, end of the show. Thank you. Um, when is the Plaza Suite going to air? It's February what? Um, the Plaza Suite will be February 9th through the 19th, and the auditions will be at the Annex, which is right across from Blue, where Blue used to be now mm-hmm. that they're closed. But we have a, a space called the Annex, and that's 126 Old Mammoth Road, and they'll be November 28th and 29th at 7 p.m. And you can come out and read for us and show your interest and if you don't get cast in one of those shows we'll keep you in mind for other things other things are coming up left and right so but there's also volunteer opportunities right There's volunteer opportunities to get involved backstage and um, we're always looking for people to help with lights and help with set building and ushering and you know tending the bar and so there's a lot of great opportunities Do, do you get a lot of people from bishop I get some people from Bishop. You know, it is a long drive, um, and gas is really expensive, so we try to give them a stipend. Gas is what? Expensive? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. In California. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's expensive everywhere. I have mm-hmm. um, family in Louisiana, and they're like, look at this. It's over $3 a gallon. Oh, what a dream. <laughs> yeah. So, family. Yeah. So, you have an amazing Ancestry.com story to tell because, uh, and I'm so interested in this. Have you done Ancestry.com? Have you spit yeah. in the thing? And Well, no, I haven't done the spit in the thing. You haven't spit? No. You could have some brothers and sisters that you don't even know about. I might. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I know. I spit in the thing. And Good for I have you. I have so many cousins all over the <laughs> all over the planet now because I have a grandfather and a couple of other uncles who couldn't keep it where it's supposed to be. And <laughs> whew, my mom has... Seven brothers and sisters she never met, wow. and they're wow. all older than her, um, you know, because they died. You know, my grandfather did his thing and just left him part of himself everywhere. And so um, I want to hear your story because yours is pretty incredible as well. Yeah, well, what's interesting is I just did a Theater for Young Audience show where um, I had a brother and sister retelling the story of Red Riding Hood. And the one actor, the little brother, was African-American, and the sister was white. And um, I would explain to the kids that would come in, this is all for elementary schools, that sometimes brothers and sisters, you know, you share the same nose or you share the same hair. And sometimes brothers and sisters don't share anything at all and they look completely different. And I said, in this show, you're going to see a brother and sister that don't look alike. And I said, I was adopted. And when I was a child, people would always say to me, do you know who your real mother and father are? And I'd say, well, my real mother and father are the people who... Uh, wake up in the middle of the night and change my diapers and feed me. The people who gave birth to me are called my birth parents or my biological parents. And so I explained that. But what was interesting is the minute I said I was adopted and started explaining this, the kids were like, you know, their mouths would drop and their eyes were all on me and you could hear a pin drop in that theater. And so obviously I was adopted. And um, when I was in my early 20s, when I lived in Mammoth the first time around, I did do a a search for my birth mother. And back then it was before Ancestry.com and I had to hire a private investigator. And she did find my birth mother. And um, I I I reached out to her and we talked on the phone and she did not want to keep in contact with me. She never Mm. told anybody that she got pregnant in the 60s, had Mm. a baby, gave it up for adoption. There was only five people in the world that knew that. Um, She Mm. even told my birth father that she had an abortion. And so at that wait, time, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Hold on a second. The one she got pregnant with, she told him she had an abortion. Yes. So she got pregnant at 17. He wow. was 19. They were not going to get married. She was Jewish. He was not. Her parents did not want her to marry him. It was, and it was the 60s. This is before That's when you hit it. Wade. Yeah. And so she was shipped. She was from New Orleans. She got shipped off to Los Angeles. She finished her pregnancy there, gave the baby up for adoption, went back to high school in New Orleans, finished school, married somebody at 25, never told him that she gave a baby up for adoption. Wow. So she's living this lie. And, you Mm. know, so I I understood. I understood that she did not feel comfortable with 
upheavaling her entire life and coming out to her family and letting them know that this happened, you know, 20 some years ago. This episode of This Crazy Life is sponsored by Stacy Does Weddings. Creating a fun and legal wedding ceremonies is a specialty for wedding officiant Stacy Powell's Leister. Her motto is any kind of wedding, any time of the day or night. Stacy will make sure that the culmination of all the wedding planning, the ceremony itself, will be a moment of grace and love, honoring the fact that the two people found each other in this crazy world we live in, falling deeply and madly in love. Be easy as saying, I do. Stacy will perform any ceremony, non-denominational, religious, non-secular, themed weddings, interfaith, hand fasting, and same sex. Stacy also specializes in last minute weddings. Call 661-433-9800 or visit her on the web at stacydoesweddings.com. Um, I met a woman who was a birth mother right before I met her, and she explained to me when she was pregnant in the 60s, she came out about it later in life. But you're holding this monkey on your back of, uh, you were, you know, she lost her job, she was kicked out of university, she was put in a home for unwed mothers where they were told there were whores and sluts, and if they get rid of the baby, they could possibly get their lives back. Hmm. And so you have this this heavy weight on your shoulders your entire life thinking, if, if all these people knew what a horrible person I was, because I gave my own child up for adoption. You're living with this and it depletes your self-esteem. And so I understood why my birth mother didn't want to carry on a relationship or meet me in person. And so years went on and during COVID, I all of a sudden got an urge to find my biological father. And um, so I decided to do um, 23andMe and Ancestry.com. And about six months into it, I got a hit at 25%. And if you're sharing a parent, it said it, we were either aunt or uncle or niece or nephew. And when you're sharing um, one parent, it's 25% as a half sibling. Oh, so, wait. Okay, so you spit in the thing I spit for in the both thing. 23 and Ancestry. Mm -hmm. And where did you get the hit on which? On ancestry. Your, and Ancestry. Yeah. And so you got an email? So I got, I got a notification that you have, you know, they always send you these notifications. These are your matches. And usually most of the matches are anywhere from 1% to 2% or less. Which means they're fourth or fifth or sixth cousins. Or even second or third. Okay. You know, um, but when I got the 25% hit. Oh, mm. oh did your heart just go oh, like. I, I freaked out. I mean, the minute I opened my, my email, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And I called one of my friends who's also adopted. He's like, no, that's a half sister. That's a half sister. <laughs> and so I. Um, I well, how'd you know it was a sister? Well, because it's a woman's name. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. You have the name. Well, okay. Could have been a trans. Yes, that's true. That's <laughs> we are true, in but, 2022. Um, but I just assumed it was a female. Um, and so she, um, so I, I looked at her back at her background where she had a family tree and I saw who her father was. And when I was adopted in the 60s, they gave you non-identifying information. Back then, they did not want open uh, ad adoptions. Right. The files were, were sealed. You were never to open them. And since, you know, of course, laws have changed and now you, if you have uh, waivers signed by both parents, you can open those sealed files waiver signed by your parents who adopted you okay. and your birth parents both okay. parents have to sign them okay so um i did not have that <laughs> mm. and so um that's why i went the the ancestry and the private investigator route but um but so they give you non-identifying information and i knew my mm. birth father was 19 i knew he was from New louisiana i knew he was spanish german descent and i knew that he went off to the military so i looked him up and unfortunately he passed away 12 mm. years prior but in the obituary it said he went off to the military he was you know the same age he um was actually colombian and german descent he was born in Bogota, Colombia, and so I knew this was my birth father. So I con I reached out through email and I said, "Can you please contact me?" And she called me and she said, "Yeah, I see that we're like aunt or uncle or niece or nephew." And I said, "Well, actually, I think um, your father was my birth father. I was adopted." Ooh. And she said, "Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think so. We're thinking maybe it's my uncle." I said, "Well, I know that his age was right, and he went off to the military. I do know his my birth mom's name was Marlene." I said, maybe um, you can ask your aunt or uncle when you see them next if they remember a girlfriend from high school named Marlene. And she said, well, yeah, it's the holiday season. I'll call you in a couple weeks. And she literally called me in 40 minutes. And she said, I just talked to my mom. 
she said, yes, my dad had a girlfriend named Marlene. She had an abortion. He destroyed him his entire life. He felt guilty about it. And it's confirmed. You're hmm. my half-sister. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so was it like a, ah! It was definitely an ah moment. Hmm. I mean, you know, not all of these stories come out great. You know, no. you never know who you're yeah. contacting. But what happened from him is, you know, he went off to the military. He came back from the military, got married, had two children. One of them passed away um, from a liver disease, and the other one got in a horrible car accident and has a little bit of brain trauma, and um, she's not as close to his second family. And he got married again at 39 and uh, had a second family, five kids. So my youngest half-sibling, my, my little brother, he's 23. And the oldest sister from that family is 36, and I'm 57. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a huge age difference. Wow. But I've, um, so uh, we talked on the phone, you know, that weekend. It was right at Christmas, two years ago. And um, we all talked, and um, I spoke to his sister. And, um, you know, they all were very open-armed type of family where they... Now, this is like your, dad's, more, your dad's sister. My, da my dad's, yeah. So sister. your aunt. Yeah, my birth aunt and his widow is um, really great. I mean, she was 20 years younger than him, mm -hmm. so um, or 15 years younger than him. And um, and so we just started a relationship over the phone and over Zoom. And then I got to meet my first sister um, that lives in Denver, and I went to meet her. And it was amazing. It was, it was really an interesting experience. Because, um, well, I met her, for, I spent a weekend there. I didn't stay with her. I got my own Airbnb, and we just spent a lot of time together. We spent like a three-hour dinner together, and then the next day we went to a museum and spent the day together, and then I went to her house for dinner, and then the next day um, we had dinner together, and then I left Denver. And I remember after, at the last meeting with her, she's like, you know, I feel like I've just met, a, like I'm with a really good friend, like, you know, that we've known each other forever, and you're a really good friend. And I left kind of heartbroken because I felt, I don't want another friend. I want a, I want family. I want a sister. And mm -hmm. I was like crying. And, and I called a friend who went through this. And I'm like, I, I, I couldn't even process the emotions. I was crying for a whole week, it mm -hmm. just all the time. And I had to call my old shrink. And I, I need a session with you <laughs> just to process. You don't even know what you're feeling. It was mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. bizarre. Well, isn't it a little bit of grief because of the family know. that you – that was out there and you didn't even know until right. two years ago? Yeah, it's hard to articulate the feelings. It was mm -hmm. just it was just all this pent up emotions that was coming out at once. And um, and then, you know, I, I got together with my other family. Then I met the, the widow, uh, my birth stepmother, and um, she's only five years older than me. <laughs> which is really weird when uh, and we got really close really fast with all these people and my other sisters and my brother and um i remember she was taking me home to the airport and she's like you know i don't know what to call you what are you to me and i'm like you're my stepmom <laughs> we're the same age <laughs> this episode of this crazy life is also sponsored by jaspin it consultants Jaspin is trusted by financial firms, hospitals and small businesses with over 30 years of experience specializing in computer repair for PC and Mac, managed IT solutions, managed antivirus, servers, virtualization, networking, surveillance solutions, VoIP phone service, and digital signage. We are building a reputation for creating a positive return on investments for our clients. If you are serious about your business success, our team of professionals can get you there. Strategic thinking, personal attention, competitive prices, real world results. Discover the Jaspin Difference located at 249 North Main Street in Bishop, California, 760 872 2797, or on the web at www.jaspin.com. It was really funny, but um, we just really connected, and um, I think. Because I don't have a family anymore. My brother passed away and my father passed away when I was 19. And my mother died from Alzheimer's when I was 40. Mm. And so I think um, I was really ready to have family. And they're such a big, open, very close-knit family that it was very easy for me to slide in. It's weird, though, because there's no book that tells you how to navigate these relationships. I mean, mm -hmm. this is like a thing that is totally different than anything that I've experienced. So we're sisters, right? We're half sisters. But I don't have the same liberties of the relationship that they have with each other that they were grown, that they were raised with. Right. And so right. it's it takes time for these relationships to really bond and 
and happen and become solid. And so I'm still at the honeymoon phase of like, we all get along really well. And um, I really, I adore them. I really like them a lot and I want them to like me so much. And I think being adopted, you always have an abandonment issue. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always like in fear of like, you know, am am I calling them too much? Am I texting them too much? You know, you just don't, it's just hard to navigate and it's just it just takes time to figure it all out and and hopefully with time it will figure itself out but now you said you have one who who's the one that lives in Denver that's so that's um, a half sister yeah all my, they're and all then, half siblings so I have um, the second family that he had he had five kids okay. he has three girls one in in Denver two in New Orleans he has a son in New Orleans and a son in Wyoming so wow. I haven't the only person I have not met yet and then my other sister from his first um, marriage is also in New Orleans so I've been to New Orleans a few times I've been to Denver once. And um, and they all have little kids because they're all in their 30s. And so your aunt Shira, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and their kids are adorable. It was so cute because the second time I went to see them, I came, I pulled up in my car, and all the kids were in the in the front yard, and they saw me, and they all ran to me, and they're like Shira, and they all hugged me, and (laughs) it was so cute. It was so sweet, and they're just lovely. So are they ever going to come out here to visit you? You know, it's hard because they all have families. So it's like mm-hmm. me going over there. It's just one airfare. Mm-hmm. For them, it's right. you know, seven airfares. My, my one sister, she actually got pregnant at 19, and she did not have an abortion. And she has five kids now. And she got married to the guy that got her pregnant. And they actually, it was it was kind of a one-night, not a one-night stand, but she was at a party. She They were friends. They had sex. It was unprotected, obviously. And she got pregnant. And she they were not in a relationship, but through the pregnancy, they got to know each other and fell in love, <laughs> and they're still together today. I love that. Wow. I know, and they're perfect for each other. I love that. Yeah. So how often do you go out there? I try to go at least twice a year. Okay. And do you Zoom each other? Or do you face We don't them? Zoom, but we do talk on the phone, and we'll text. And um, You know, actually, COVID was the perfect time for this to happen because I had the time to go out and visit them and spend time with them. Now I'm starting to get back to business. Things are opening up, and I've got a lot of shows that we're doing, and it's going to be hard. So I'm going to go to Denver for um, New Year's Eve, and I'm going to and take my boyfriend. They haven't met my boyfriend yet. And, they and all... is this the same boyfriend that I know? Yeah, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure. You and I haven't talked for a while. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that it's no, same we've been together for 15 years. I know. I mean, and now I'm that's a common point. law marriage, you know. I know, and we're at the age where like I'm not starting ever again. We're stuck with each other, so <laughs> we're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, Tim is great. He, he's he's great. so helpful to you. For uh, I mean, light. He's an actor. He does light. He does all the technical he's stuff. So and amazing. And he's a he's a looper. He's a June Lake. You know, he was raised in June Lake. A looper. Yeah. I didn't know he was raised in June. Lake. Is that what yeah. they're called? Loopers? Did I, you know? I just know. That I learned that just now. So yeah. looper. If you were raised in Bishop, what would you be called? I have no clue. If you're raised in Mammoth, what would you be called? There's no, there's no a nickname. looper. Yeah. Uh, okay, a that's kind of like the like... clampers. <laughs> He's a looper. <laughs> Next time I see him, I'm gonna go, "Hey, looper, what's going on, looper?" Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely would not be where I am today if it wasn't for him. I mean, he does all the technical aspects. He really elevates the production level of mm-hmm. the shows because of the sets he makes and the lighting that he does and his technical knowledge and because he's been in theater forever. You know, we need a whole bunch of sponsors. This is why because we can sponsor Shira's family to come out and see one of her productions. Oh, that would be really cool. So when we are making millions of dollars on this <laughs> this crazy live Looking show, we can fly her whole family out so yeah. they can come see her at, at her best yeah. when she's on the stage and directing. And act. Are you going to act in any of these things? Are you going to direct? or um, I'm directing... Uh, um, Plaza Suite. Oh, Thank you. I would love to audition for that. Yeah. I'm too old. No, you're not. I am. Look at... I ditched you my need a number? Well, um, plus, I'm not going to be here the, from February 14th on. I'm, oh. We're out of the country. Oh, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have worked the shows. Got, have we can a, zoom you in. Yeah. From French Polynesia? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> The internet. <laughs> yeah, they, no, no, one of the islands they don't, actually, oh, <laughs> that wow. we're going to be, they kind of do, but anyways. It's that's probably whole, bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. spotty. If it's windy, it goes out, that kind of, yeah. we were warned, and I said, that's fine. Um, so we only got a couple minutes left. So um, Eastern Sierra Alliance, if people want to donate or volunteer for anything. Yeah, they can go to easternsierraarts.org. Okay. 
or they can send a check to East Missouri <laughs> Arts Alliance and send it to P.O. Box 1316, Mammoth Lakes, California, 93546. And they should check us out um, online, and we have a lot going on, and things are opening up, so I hope to be back in business. Were you guys part of the murder mystery that I saw last no. night? No, that's But true. you were there. Yeah, I was anyway. there. I, I, I always go, if somebody does some plays in Bishop or Mammoth I or even June Lake yeah. I always go to support because I, I need to sh- I, if I want people to come see my shows I need to show them that I'm coming to see theirs right exactly exactly yeah. I love that and I love that you're continuing to do this and I love there was like a rumor that you were going to leave for a while who said that there was the rumor mill the rumor mill you know how the rumor mill is it's been it's been tough you know mammoth is not easy i mean there's a lot of politics that go into mammoth and Mm -hmm. they definitely don't make it easy for people that are doing the arts but um there are avenues of support in certain sections of the town Mm -hmm. and the community and i'm here to stay you know i have a house in mono city i'm not going anywhere (laughs) yay (laughs) i love mono city you guys get the greatest thunderstorms out there in the summer yeah we do (sighs) beautiful we don't get them you get them here sometimes in mammoth we don't they were all up north they were right up mammoth doesn't get them because the the sierra crest is right right there and the west blows them so they kind of start at crowley and then they're over i'm saying i you know i I chase storms. I like to do that. So I'm either in Crowley or up by you. I'll I'll go to Monocone and have a burger and sit on top of the, right by the Woe Nelly Deli there up there and look out over Mono Lake and watch the storms. I love it up there. So Eastern Sierra Arts. Alliance. Alliance. Um, and yeah, Eastern Sierra Arts.org. Eastern Sierra Arts.org. Okay. I think, you know, we and there's some great talent that we have here in the Eastern Sierra. And so I love that you are doing that. And thank you for being here on this crazy life because what a crazy story about your ancestry. And we got to keep the arts alive here yeah, in the Eastern Sierra. Absolutely. Because yeah. you do the art thing. You do laughing, what is it, laughing parrot? Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> the, that's a conure. That's a conure. I know, that's but not it's still a parrot. parrot. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a conure. Conure is a parrot. Really? Yeah. And that parrot used to laugh. Okay, it's kind of like a boxer as a dog. Right? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This crazy life with Stacy Powell's and Jason Brown. Thank you, Shira. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.